So this is uh, ninth grade. This is the F class who's inched back into the lead here. Uh, so we're actually on page 93, which is Canto 4. And I just remind everybody, if you don't know, you open the book, you don't know where you are, just if everything is, told, is given to you at the top of the page. Canto 4, Circle 1, Limbo. Um, and he's going through. And so every time we go to a new circle, we need to know who's there, like what kind of people are there. Uh, because he, sometimes he talks to people. So there are going to be people he talks to. But what, how are they being punished? And thirdly, what is, um, what is the sin they've committed? And in, in this case, I guess we need to add a fourth thing. What geographically, what does the place look like? And so um, we did kind of read through this as the bell rang. But um, let's go back, if you would. Probably that's the best thing to line 52. Uh, it says, when I was newly in this state, this is Virgil talking. It says, while I was newly in this state, I saw one come in majesty and all, and on his head were crowns of victory. Our great first father's spirit he did withdraw, and righteous Abel, Noah, who built the ark, Moses, who gave and who obeyed the law, King David, Abraham, patriarch Israel, with his father and generation, Rachel, for whom he did such deeds of mark, with many another of his chosen nation. These did he bless and know that ere that day no human soul had ever seen salvation. So the idea is that prior to Christ's death and resurrection, um, the idea is that he opened heaven now. And so what happened before that? And all this is I am not all at all completely comfortable with the details. Not that they're not there, I just don't remember them all. But that prior to Jesus' death and resurrection and opening heaven, the, the people of the Old Testament went to a place called paradise. Um, paradise was uh, a great place to be, but it was a temporary holding place before heaven was open. And if, if, if I'm completely wrong, I know that is a way some people look at it. It's, it's not very clear. The, the fact is heaven's open and we're going there and we know how to get there. Those are the important things. So that's what he meant when he said the idea was that Jesus, and the name of this is called, there's a name for it. So I'd like you to note the name. It's called the heroine of hell. Heroine here means raiding, like a military raid or, you know, robbers raiding something, heroine. So the, between his death and resurrection, somewhere in that period, Christ raided hell and grabbed all the patriarchs who've been there since, you know, like Adam and all the ones mentioned, and he takes them to heaven. That's called a harrowing of hell. What's the punishment in the There is no punishment. So separation, separation from um, from God is the punishment. And I, I think of it this First way. Peter three through five. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at that. First Peter three. Um, let me just read this this verse that you'll see why it'd be very dangerous to to rely too much on this. First Peter, that's what it says. Three, nine. Um, that's not it. Is it second Peter? Three, first Peter, three nineteen. Okay, that's why. Okay, let me change that, please. Alright, so I'm gonna read the the whole verse. It says a first I'll start with 18. This is a, a, a great uh, evangelical verse, witnessing verse. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit. And then this is the, the verse. It's actually, again, just part of the verse. It says, in which he went and proclaimed to the spirits in prison because they formerly did not obey when God's patience waited in the days of Noah while the ark was being prepared, and so forth. It goes on to some other things. So that idea that Christ preached to the spirits in prison, I have this, this, this long of an explanation at the bottom of my study Bible. You know, it's just real long. I'm not going to read it to you, but I'll, I will tell you that according to this, there are five main interpretations of these verses. So this is one interpretation, is that Christ actually went to hell. Do, do you say that in your, your, um, uh, your ap 
Apostles Creed. I'm not sure where it appeared, but and and he died on the cross. You know, we we I wish I could remember the words. And he descended into hell, and then ascended into heaven. A lot of those do not have the descended into hell part. A lot of them just have and he ascended in heaven. Uh, it's the Apostles Creed, I think. Um, so even some of our creeds acknowledge that, and it's is that happened? We just not it's not crystal clear. So I just point that out, but. It's in, it's in the book. This whole limbo idea is an entire chapter in this book, so we have to address it. So Christ went to, to um, hell, grabbed all the saints from the Old Testament, and, and brought them into heaven. And that, that's where 1 Peter 3.19 comes in. It's one of five interpretations of that. Yes? Wait, so according to this, are like, is Noah still in hell, or like when he was down the now, again, when Jesus died on the cross, this the interpretation of this is in which he went and proclaimed to the spirits in prison. So they, they interpret that the spirits in prison would be hell. So might not be that's what it means, but that's one interpretation. So they would have been in hell even if they were like basically like a follower of Christ. If they were still in hell, would they be like punished or would they just Yeah, it's more like the paradise part of hell. Just like limbo here is is oh, a God. is a is a calm, beautiful place right. in hell because hell is separation from God. So I don't know. You just take your pick. That's not anything to just worry too much about because um, we know what's going on now. But um, that's that's what that refers to. Do we have a question that covers that? Maybe not. Um, well, describe. Let me keep reading. So I'm over now at, at um, line 50. 64. While he thus spake, we still made no delay, but past the wood, I mean the wood tw as twer of souls, ranged thick as trees. Being now some way, not far from where I'd slept, I saw appear a light. So they're in limbo, and he sees trees in limbo. You're not going to find any trees except in the suicide circle of or the ring of suicide, and they're all dead. That's yeah. so wrong. That is so wrong. Go ahead. What does spake mean? What's the word? Spake, is it spoke? Oh, past tense, an old way of, yes. Yeah. So uh, he sees a light in hell, which overcame the shadowy face of gloom and made a glowing atmosphere, uh, hemisphere. Twere yet some distance known, yet I could trace so much as brought conviction to my heart that persons of great honor held that place. O thou that honors every science and art, say, who are these who honor, whose honor gives them claim to different customs and a sphere apart? So this is, they see a light in hell. Uh, we're talking about limbo. There's a light and... I think I've spelled that correct. I'll double. If, if you've read in, in Greek mythology where all the great heroes go to Elysium or the Elysian fields, um, that's kind of how Dante has worked that into this book, this Christian book. He's, remember, he's mixing mythology and theology and all kinds of things. Um, but that's the Elysian. I did spell that right. So she thinks that this this it's actually a castle. They're getting close to a castle. Yeah. Well, let, let me just finish this, and you'll be the first person to read. Um, uh, all right, and and this is line seventy six. And he to me that their honorable name still in thy world resounding as it does winds here from heaven in favor due to fame. Meanwhile, I heard a voice that cried out thus: Honor the Most High Poet, his great his great shade which was departed is returned to us. So somebody, this is the first time somebody's talked to Dante in hell. So somebody actually speaks to Dante. Now, they're not actually speaking to Dante, they're speaking to Virgil, because they say his return to us. <clears throat> it, it paused there and was still, and lo, there made toward us four mighty shadows of the dead. If you want to underline four mighty shadows, shadows is another word for spirits or Shades, or some it's used, the word is used, who in their mean nor grief nor joy display. So people in hell aren't happy, they're not sad. They're just 
Yeah. Like the met emoji. I can't hear you. Like the met emoji from the movie. Oh, you need okay. to they're not happy or sad because they're separated from God. Yes. Is this life going on? Are they just not doing anything? Or are they just they're being punished. Like, yeah. Just this, there, like, this is the one place nobody is punished. The punishment oh. is separation from God. So are they? What are they doing? We don't see them doing anything. What did you want us to underline? Well, no, no, underline no, the four mighty no, shadows. No, 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 all right, let me keep reading. Who in their mean nor grief nor joy displayed. Mark well the first of these, my master said, who in his right uh, hand bears a naked sword and goes before thee is chief and head. Homer is he. So we're going to get some names here. I want you to circle. These are these four mighty shadows. Homer, you've heard him. The poet's sovereign lord. Next, Horace, circle him. Comes a Roman poet. And the keen satirical Ovid, the third, circle him, he's Roman. And Lucan afterwards, I think he's also Roman. He's a poet. So, so all three of them were Roman? Yes. Well, Homer's Greek. But Horace, Ovid, and Lucan, because I share with these that honorable grand title, the sole voice was heard to cry, they do me honor and therein do well. So there are four of them. And uh, Dante would make a I mean, Virgil would make a fifth, right? So Virgil's a part of this group. I should point out, uh, Mrs. We you know Ms. Weaver? Yes. Her son, Christian, I don't know mm -hmm. if you've ever, if you've ever talked about him or seen. When he was in this class, he, uh, he named these poets the Dead Poets Society. If, if you remember, there's a movie made about 30 years, 20 years ago called Dead Poets Society. But that's a great description of them. They're dead poets, and they've got a little group here. Question, like, I wonder if they still, like, do poetry in their free time at school. I didn't have mm -hmm. that. Like, you you know, know, again, it's all, it's all imaginary. Okay. Hell does not okay. contain a place like this, literally. Um, let me keep reading. Thus in their school assembled, I, even I, looked on the Lord to block the song whose style or the rest goes soaring eagle high. Um, all right, if you want to read, it's a top of page. Top of page 94. Except it, oh, it's Roman 96. When they had talked together a short while, they all, with signs of welcome, turned my way, which moved my master to a kind of smile. And greater honor, yet they did me. Yet into their fellowship they deigned invite and make me six among such minds as they. So okay, we, wait a minute. Circle six, because now they're six. Dante is an honorary member of this group. And it says Dane, which means like they stoop lower That's to right. invite them. Into because they were all greater than Dante. At least Dante sees them as greater than him. Good. That's a great point. Go ahead when you're ready. Okay. So we move slowly onward toward the light and talk. Whereas unfitting to repeat, here as to speak, there was both fit and right. And presently we reached a noble seat, a castle girt with seven high walls around, and molded with a goodly rivulet. Rivulet means river. a little river. Okay, just underline, this is a part of the geography of Limbo. There's a castle there. There has seven high walls around it. Uh, and there's a moat. There's a river, a little river that runs around. All this, remember, is, this is Limbo, the Limbo part of hell. Keep going. Or which we went as though upon dry ground with those wise men. I passed the sevenfold gate into a fresh green meadow where we found persons with grave and tranquil eyes and great authority in their carriage and attitude who spoke but seldom in a voice sedate. So here we walked aside a little and stood upon the opening eminence, lit serens and clear, whence once all might will be, be viewed. Plain in my sight on the in Hamilton Green, all those grand spirits were shown me one by one. It thrills my heart to think of what I have seen. I saw Electra, saw her with, saw her with, saw with her, and then uh, Anon, Anon means means soon. Um, um, circle some that you know. As you see a name that you know, these are other people that are in Parrot in um, Limbo. Keep going. Hector, Aeneas, many Trojan peers, and hawk eyed Caesar in his habergan. I saw Camilla and bold Penthesilla yeah, on the other hand, Latinus on his throne, 
besides Lavinia, his daughter, here. Brutus, by whom proud Tarquin was Orderon, Marcia, Cornelia, Julia, with Crete, and I saw a great Saladin aloof alone. Circle him. It's interesting. He's he's a Muslim. It's interesting. Dante would if he's, he was so well respected, even by Christians who fought him. But he he makes it into limbo. Keep, you want to read one more? Yeah. Higher, I raised my brows and further scanned and saw the master of the men who seat, who seated amid the philosophic band. Okay, so underline him, and that probably a reference to Aristotle. But these are the kinds of people that um, that live in limbo. Thank you. Uh, circle, circle master oh, of master. the men. That would be that would be Aristotle. All to him, Aristotle. Honor and deep reverence shows. And notice some of these other names: Socrates, Plato. Uh, in the nearest room to him, Diogenes, Thales, and Zeno, Democritus, who held all things come by chance, um, Empedocles, and Naxorus wise Heraclitus, him that wept for doom, Dioscorides, who named the qualities Tully and Orpheus, Linus, and thereby good Seneca, well skilled to moralize, Euclid, the geom geometrician, Ptolemy, Galen, Hippocrates, Avian, uh, Averroes, who made the commentary, nay, but I, I tell not all that I saw then, the long theme drives me hard, and everywhere the wondrous truth outstrips my staggering pen. The group of six dwells to two. We fare forth a new way. And I, my God, with all, I, my God, with all, out of that quiet to the far quivering air and reach a place where nothing shines at all. So it's, it just, it goes against our, you know, it's um, counterintuitive to think such a place would be in hell. But can I give you this definition? In general, limbo and the Elysian field the Elysian fields of, of mythology is is the paradise, the place where the blessed go after death. And so there was really no concept of heaven where God is uh, up until Christ. People didn't really understand. So you know, even in the Old Testament, it talks about people going to Sheol. Everybody goes to Sheol. Even the good people go to Sheol. So there's there's really no understanding of of. And we, the Bible is, we call it progressive revelation. Uh, as you read it, you get more and more revel. God reveals more and more about himself and, and ourselves and his future, our future. I think it's interesting on uh, the line 136 um, where he like, specifies like those who held all things come by chance. That, like, <laughs> that's, that's like one of the reasons why they're in like, I guess, So th these are people that, by human sight, are pretty good people. Unfortunately, that's what people think, you know, about themselves. I'm one of those people. But hell, there is no such place as limbo, because hell is a terrible place. And people that seem like all these great people that he described, they were sinners. And the Bible teaches they were terrible sinners. You are. I am. It's only Christ. It's the only reason we're going to heaven just point out, and I looked for it, I couldn't find it, but that seems like they're green fields out here. I know it's here. I don't know why I couldn't find it. Yeah, it says, on the, on the enameled green of those great spirits. So, the enameled green is, it has green fields, it has a castle with a light, everything else is dark in hell, but not this castle, the, Elys the Elysium, the, the capital of hell, if you will, um, and all these great people are there. So, this is a way to kind of, it, to try to explain where do good people go who didn't know Jesus? Well, they go to hell, but they don't go to the worst part of it. Again, that's not that's not what Scripture teaches, but it's what it's this view that we have here. Um, so now they're leaving Circle One, and they're going to Circle Two, which um, is uh, crazy things are going on. Every every other place, you'll see some really interesting points. So we have. Um,
we've gone all the way to actually actually twins. I know we didn't have time to talk about it, so we'll start there tomorrow. Verse, I mean, question 20. I think that's one of the most interesting parts of the book we just read. I know, I just wrote my answer to it. Good. Well, at least the answer that I think I was. I bet you're, you're, you're right. See, uh, we do get out five minutes early today on uh, Wednesday, so we're good. So you're not... You're not A, you're L. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Powell. See you later. Thank you, Mr. Powell. Thank you. Yeah, ladies, see you.